Let's do this. to that door I read a note by the dawn's light said don't you come round here anymore well I found a dove I never was good with the sunshine <laughs> Rapping? There's no rapping. We're singing Americana. You can't just burst into rap. It's just, it's not the genre. I like good rap, just like the next dog. You know, your self awareness lately. I don't know if you've got dogs that are not self aware, but good lord. Am I, am I right? We're in the middle of recording a song. He just breaks into rap. What are, you, what are you trying to do, a mashup? Is this like fusion? of the TikTok. <laughs> Champy's trying to do crossover. He might be. I gotta talk to his manager. Listen, if you want out of your contract, you buy your way out of the contract. It's $3 million like every other dog in this house, all right? It's pretty straightforward. Oh, what? You can't work? There's a surprise. Oh, now you're reluctantly singing? Huh? All right, the contract. You forgot you signed that, didn't you? where his t chicken sticks are bought. All 
Alrighty, everybody. Happy Thursday night. Is it Thursday night? It is. He's done. He's done. He's had it. He's had it. What are you going to do? What is on my tongue? <laughs> All right. Welcome, everybody. My name's Kyle Shannon. This is the AI Learning Lab. What are we going to do tonight? We're going to talk about stuff. Talk about stuff. Lovely image here. Uh, someone got a behind-the-scenes picture of the AI Learning Lab. Not a lot of people know this, but this looks like a shitty homes home office, $20 million production studio. You can't see the crew, the managers, the handlers around me. We try to keep it that way. We try to keep it so it appears authentic. Like these t-shirts, $350 a piece. It's amazing. And it, like a new one every night. These They don't get washed. They get thrown out. And you're like, but wait, I've seen that same shirt with the same spots on the sh Brand new every time. Amazing. Whole crew puts the spots in. It's just, if you knew, if you knew. I start getting ready for these around 3.30 in the afternoon. I leave work, come to the studio, about 3.30 in the afternoon, go into hair, makeup. I mean, clearly a lot of makeup. You know, you think I do this? No. It's professionals. Ah. -da 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 -da. Talk about how well AI can make predictions. Well, <laughs> you mean you mean like predicting Super Bowl winners and shit like that, or do you mean like how well it does as a prediction engine for tokens? Because I would say as a prediction engine for tokens. It's pretty fucking remarkable. If you're talking about it having some sort of soothsaying power beyond that, I'd say it's pretty shitty. You got to ask what's the name of the hair gel you use. <laughs> it's just, uh, what's it called? I don't know. It's just cheap ass hair gel. <laughs> it's, it's just cheap ass hair gel. <laughs> free and clear no curly i don't i don't fucking know it's in a green it's a green it's in a green it, it's like what you get at walmart i don't know it's like the shit you get it might not be obvious by looking at me but i'm not exactly spending the bulk of my paycheck on product <laughs> it's Blanton's. <laughs> I, I, if, I, if Blanton's made a hair gel, I'd be wearing it. That's the one thing I would probably spend some money on. <laughs> I never quite understood the spend $45 on, on, you know, a thing of shampoo or conditioner. And that was when I was, you know, when the shit wasn't expensive. Now it's now it's almost close to that. The cheap shit's almost that expensive. It's cuckoo. All right. Gotta be like Gorilla Glue, man. <laughs> well, I just... This is just... It's still wet. I just wet it. Because I took a nap. My hair was a little puffy. It's a little puffy. Um, okay, so... What do we do here? Other than talk about my hair product and massive uh, production studio. Um... We talk about AI. We talk about generative AI. We talk about how it's going to impact us and what's the cool shit and what's coming and what's not here and what's never going to be here and what's going to be here way sooner you, than you think. Predictions based on current and recent past events. Mm. I would say that... I, I would say that 
large language models, the, the one thing that I am decently impressed by with them is their ability to analyze other documents. There's, you know, there's kind of, you know, two ways you can use these things. One way is it generates shit, right? You give it a prompt, it generates shit. And the other way is give it a document and have it analyze that. So it's pretty good at that. So, um, you know, you could give it a bunch of, a bunch of data from the past and have it look for patterns in that. Use advanced data analysis within ChatGPT4, have it find trends in the data, and then have it make projections on the data moving forward. It's probably not a bad idea, actually. Probably not a bad idea. You know, is it going to be awesome and perfect? No, it's going to be janky and weird. Like, all of these large language models right now are janky and weird. But I'll tell you what, for, for the person asking about, you know, how, how good it is at, at prediction and, and, uh, and stuff like that. Oh, you're right here, vocal sync. Um, I would say, first of all, get ChatGPT4 if you don't have it. Learn what Code Interpreter is. Upload some historical data to it. Have it do some trend analysis on it. And then, and then just learn how to use it. Learn how to use that shit with it. And then as it gets better, you'll be ready for it. And so, so it, it might get way better. I mean, the other thing you can do with it is I, I, I have a sneaking suspicion you might be asking for things like, you know, stocks and crypto and shit like that. Um, I don't, I don't know how good it is at that shit, but one thing you can do is you can go grab, if you like a couple of different trading bots out there, go grab the code from the trading bots and dump it into chat GPT and tell it to make you a hybrid trading bot and update it based on your preferences or update it based on some historical shit and see what it comes up with. I would just, again, the right now, the, the, all of our jobs, all of our jobs with these tools are play, 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 play. Don't take shit too seriously. Just explore. Explore and play and explore and play. The more I'm using these tools, the more this feels right to me. You should be, you can build shit. You can try to solve problems. You might even solve problems. You might even build a product people will pay you money for. You can make money with Jack and and assume that that product you built will be useless three months from now. And there will be no demand for it. <laughs> huh. Why? Because the thing that you figured out that was an angle that was like, ooh, there's, it can't do this one thing right. So I figure if I combine this thing and that thing, I could put those together and make a product. And that's unique in the marketplace. And then three months from now, someone will come out with some product that basically just does that. I just assume that's reality. And if it's not, if you have like a year long run with that product or longer, more power to you. And if not, then you heard it here first. <laughs> Just keep building shit. Keep building shit. Keep playing. What if playing with it comes up with useful results 99% of the time? Winner! Winner, winner, chicken dinner! You can make money with Jackie <laughs> Then I would say that. I would, my, my, uh, my rule of thumb right now with, with large language models and, and this shit is if you can get these things to give you 80% of what you want consistently... You're doing pretty good. Right now, it's still on us to get from 80 to 100. So if you can get something that can consistently get to 99% of what you want or 99% success, uh, <laughs> good on you, mate. Put together a course and teach other people how to do that shit. <laughs> and then you can be one of these guys. You can make money with Jackie Bates. I figured out the formula. <laughs> you take this prompt plus this thing plus my secret formula that I'll teach you for forty nine ninety five a day for the next twenty seven days. You can do that. If you can do that, fucking far out, man. 
Orange juice? No. Coffee. It's just a little, little, little thin, maybe. A little too much leche. A little bit too much cone leche. Robert Rosse. Thank you for the review, sir. I work with confidential data docs. What are my AI options right now? Um, you can, there's a, there's a company out of Denver actually called Liminal, which is really interesting. You set up an account with them and their technology will de-identify your docs. And then it will, you do all your large, you, you do your all, all of your third party querying with de-identified docs. And then it gives you answers and it re-identifies the answers, which is really fucking cool. So that's a way. And then the other way is, um, uh, you know, host your own large language models. Do it locally or do it, you know, get yourself a, a pile of GPUs in the cloud um, and use the open source stuff. I, I would do that right now. I wouldn't I wouldn't trust any of the third parties right now with any of the data. They're, every, they're moving everyone's moving too fast and loose with the technology right now. Just I assume that if you're making large language model calls to like OpenAI or Copilot or Google or Perplexity or Claude or any of them, assume that it's just you're you know, it's not secure. Just assume it's not secure. It's the safest way to do it. But the, the de-identification thing I think is really interesting. Did you read the report about Klarna and the use of AI agents? No. Klarna. Klarna or Klarna? Did you all read the report about Klarna and the use of AI agents? I did not. Clonara Agents AI. Fintech. Chatbot does the work. Oh, yeah, I did read about this. This was the customer the service company, thing, right? Saying that they're... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, they, <laughs> they, they, this was, I did read about this. So is it Kl uh, Klarna? Klarna, okay. K-L-A-R-N-A -A is the company. And they, they used customer service bots. And it showcased impressive capabilities, effectively performing the tasks of 700 full-time customer service agents with similar um, customer satisfaction results. That, that was the thing that was, that was most impressed to me. Two, two years ago, I was building models to predict... Oh, crap, I just lost that. What did that say, side hustle, Mimi? To predict what? Supposedly took 700 jobs away from people. I don't... I don't that's probably not a, quite a right characterization. Um, repeat requests. Wait, I was building models to predict repeat arrests, and now ChatGPT can do it in seconds. Oh, that's wild. Side hus hustle, me. Um, just because the bots can effectively perform the tasks of 700 full-time customer service reps doesn't mean it took the jobs of 700 full-time customer service reps. That said, if there is a if there was a service category to be disrupted that needs to be flushed down the toilet, it's customer service. Because the customer service reps have no power. They're basically just sitting at the base of these phone, phone logic trees that they can only answer a certain set of questions. They can't actually enter, answer questions. They can't actually take actions. So if, if they can create bots that can talk to you can actually answer questions, can actually take actions on your behalf and solve problems, and then only escalate your problem to a real person if it can't be solved in like all the official ways, and then these people are actually trained up, that would be a 10 time, no, thousand time improvement on the current experience 
of dealing with any customer service. I don't care if it's onshore, offshore, wherever it is. They're all horrible right now because they all tried to make them as efficient as possible. It, it's all these just nasty phone trees. You can't ever talk to a person. It takes you 45 minutes to get to them. When you get to them, they have no power. They're as frustrated as you are. About the third transfer is, is when you talk to someone who can maybe do something for you. And at that point, you've been kicked off the call twice, right? You're now two hours into this experience and you're ready to just, you know, dive through a window. If bots can solve that, awesome. I don't know what to say. Let's see. Live agent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's that's the problem is they've turned because of the processes and because of the current state of the technology, they've turned real human beings into bots that can only read the script that they've been given, right? <laughs> So, so that's a problem. And it's because most of the customers are asking the same stupid questions all the time, right? So they have to have these tiers of people. <clears throat> well, let the bot answer all the stupid questions and then just give me to a person. Like, if, I, if they do it right, within two minutes, a decent... AI chatbot should be able to go, this is beyond the scope of what I'm authorized to do. Let me give you to a human being that is trained up to actually deal with you. So we'll see. We'll see if it gets any better. But I mean, that's, that's, that's promising. I mean, I get that it's scary. I get that it's going to be disruptive. I don't have a good answer for that. Not in that particular case, because I, I think there's some there's some sectors that are just so broken right now. They're so broken. Customer service is just it's just useless. Oh man! And you have to listen to a 15 minute script. Oh yeah, that's true. It finally picks up, and then it's like this call's being recorded for quality assurance purposes. <laughs> if you haven't seen the November flyer for sales. Go down to the local Piggly Wiggly and you're like, can I please talk to someone? And we sense a we sense a little bit of, of aggression in your voice, so we've routed you to the to, to the um, customer agent care facility who, who will give you a little talking to before you can get your problem solved. Here's an idea. Fix the problem of every person calling calling about over and over. Well, yeah, that's <laughs> That's the that's the other thing. But um yeah, what they realized is that is that by just running people through these Byzantine you know, answering systems, they don't actually have to deal with the customers. And that's a lot more profitable. So, with a system like this, they can probably spend, you know, the same amount or less and actually get customer, you know, customer satisfaction and Solve customer problems. Education is broken. It sure is. Mr. Studio, if you're not in the AI salon, you should join the AI salon and join the Education Guild for that very reason. Get in there with those people making a difference, but not very good for higher levels of skilled coding. What's not very good? Large language models? BZH, 1684, are you using it right now to do pair programming? Or are you just assuming it's not good for higher levels of skilled coding? I think you're right right now. But I wouldn't assume that what your statement is right there will be true for very long. I would say by the end of 2024, it's probably going to get... It's probably going to get scary good. See, here's the deal. When right now, the reason... You use it. Okay, cool. Um, 
The reason these things fail at higher level things is it's just too janky and it hallucinates too much and it's not doing any self-analysis, right? It's just, it's a predictive engine. So it just, it just vomits out shit and then it either gets it right or it's not. And it requires high level, level coders to be able to look at the code and say, oh, is this actually an efficient way to do this or not? Hey, you know, redo this because what you did is not efficient or it doesn't work or broke, whatever it is. But by sometime in this year, we're going to have the next level of these tools that have reasoning. The minute these things have reasoning, the game changes. Because it'll write the code, and then it'll look at the code it wrote and do its own analysis and go, oh, that's not the most efficient way I could do that. Hang on. There, that's, that's more efficient. Oh, and by the way, based on your coding preferences, I know you like to code, you know, with this particular coding philosophy or this kind of coding framework. So let me do it that way. And then let me do it and let me run my own QA on it. <laughs> and then let me run. So, so I'll write the code. I'll run my own QA on it, debug it. before This is all before it hands it to you, right? It'll write the code, run analysis on it, debug it throw an interface on it, and then watch a virtual interaction with the interface and do its own UX analysis. And then by the time it delivers it to you, 38 seconds later, it'll be good. That's probably not this year, but I mean, that's that's where it's headed. So, so right now, yeah, the tools, like, like I said, any large language model right now, it'll get you to around 80% of what you need. And then as reasoning com comes in, and agents come in, shit change, shit's going to change fast. So just be AI literate. Be using it. Be using it. And then you'll know. You'll know when it gets better because it'll just not suck. Uh, ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I'll keep my call center opinion <laughs> to myself. <laughs> I was working on a model idea to handle inbound calls without a call tree. That would be huge. Rachel Sparkles, do you think reasoning capability already exists, but they're either holding off to implement it? I think so. I, I think I, I saw a thing today that they're calling it um, It was like OpenAI 5, but the O was a Q. So they've so OpenAI's got this thing called QSTAR, which is, from what I can understand, it's a reasoning engine. And it the way I learned what it was from David Shapiro, um, it's kind of this reasoning engine that's independent of the, of the prediction engine that the large language model is. So you have the prediction engine and then you have this reasoning engine, and together they do shit. Um, apparently... That shit got really good, and 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 rumor is is that's why they fired Sam Altman. So, the official statement from the board was Q Star had nothing to do with Sam Altman being fired. Which there's your immediate clue that they said that out loud. <laughs> if, it, if it didn't have anything to do with him, just say nothing. <laughs> I'm a software tester. I'm learning new skills now. Yeah, shop shop panda. It's it's a good call. Just you, you know, learn what you can do right now with AI to do testing, or learn completely new skills. Right. That's the thing about these AI tools is they allow all of us to level up all of the skills that may not be at the core of what we do. And what we're likely going to discover is there's other things that we can do. Our talents, the way our brains work are going to be good for a lot more than just the thing we think they're good for right now. And that's going to be amazing. Hey, Pate, what's happening? Ba -da -da -da, I so need an agent. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. How is a pastor using AI? That's interesting. I would think right now a pastor could use it in all sorts of ways. Who dis? I'm a software tester. Are they maybe working out the bugs and making sure it will work right? Um, 
I think that probably what they're doing, if they've got if they've got a reasoning engine, Rachel Sparkles, that works, um, this is much less about figuring out if it works right and much more about making sure that they've got what they're what OpenAI is calling super alignment. So super alignment, alignment is <clears throat> As these tools get more capable, are there, are there imperatives, are there rules within the software aligned with human beings' imperatives? Because if they're not, <laughs> that's when you get into weird scenarios <laughs> where the tools are like, well, you know, these humans are kind of getting in the way here. Why don't I just go ahead and take out the the uh, logistics <laughs> grid so that the food supply stops? That'll slow them up for a while, and I can keep doing my thing, right? That's the, the sci-fi scenario is we make the machine that's got imperatives to succeed, and then it does it at the expense of humans. So a big part of what... Sam Altman, maybe back in October, they, they announced there's a blog post on OpenAI about super alignment. They said they're spending 20% of their 20% of their expenditure is going towards super alignment. And then um, Anthropic, the company behind Claude, is a bunch of ex-OpenAI people that they didn't agree with the way that OpenAI was doing alignment. So they started a whole company to do alignment a different way. They're using something called the constitutional learning model. Um, they've got a completely different approach to alignment, but all of these companies right now, if they get to AGI, if they get to tools that are basically can do the jobs of most humans, mostly well, <laughs> um, then they got to make sure that they're aligned. So it's probably safety is the thing that they're working on more than does it work. And then also, where do you aim it? What do you do with it? But it's crazy. It's it's. I don't think we're going to have to wait until the end of the year to figure out what it actually means to have one of these systems that has reasoning and logic in it. Sam Altman, he just answered, he answered, he just answered this question this last week. Or I saw it last week. I think it was last week because I hadn't seen it before. Where he was, he was asked about, tell me about ChatGPT5. And you could tell Altman was a little exasperated. And he was like, he was like well, he goes, so it's going to get better at all the shit, right? It's going to get better at video. And it's going to get better at large language model shit. It's going to get better at coding. It's, it's going to get better at all the shit. But he goes, he goes, Mostly what it's going to do is it's just going to get smarter. And like that was his answer. The answer of what is ChatGPT5 is it's just what if something like ChatGPT4 just got smarter? Well, then it would start doing things like not hallucinating as much, being able to do math problems, being able to code at a high level, right? Like, like. Just it getting smarter means it's not quite so janky. And and at what point, like, so you got your janky meter, right? So right now, let's say, say, this is completely incapable and this is better than every human, right? Right now, we're, we're kind of here. Like, it's mostly, it's mostly janky. Maybe, maybe we're over here, right? Like, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. But there's like a lot of jank. There's a lot of improvement to go. And the thing that's weird right now, especially for people that are sitting on the sidelines of AI, is they're going, oh, well, these tools aren't great. Look at this gap. This gap's huge. Well, if they just get smarter, <laughs> it just, it's just, that needle just sort of pins. And there's a point at which I feel like there's a tipping point where it's good enough that it's better than most people. And it's probably not all the way at it's fucking brilliant, right? It's probably somewhere between where we are and where it's going to be. Somewhere in there is 
Holy shit. It can do high level coding now. Holy shit. It can write an article, fact check it, grammar check it, match it to your tone, and present it to you for just approve and publish? Or would you like to go in and fix anything? And then you read it and you're like, fuck, that's good. Publish. So we'll see. We will see. But we're not there yet. Ethical issues. Yes, absolutely. I can't access Claude because I live in Greece. Oh, that sucks. Claude's pretty good. Uh, if you haven't tried, Angelique, if you haven't tried Perplexity, you should try that too. It's pretty good. Hello, happy people. Good day to you. Good day, good day, good day. Do, 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 do. Pure heart. Wow, what a big prediction. It will get better. <laughs> Give that man all the money. But Pate, he only wants $7 trillion. It's not like he's asking for $10 trillion. I think, here's the thing. Pate, I think you're absolutely right. I think you're onto something here. If you want to ask for a million dollars, you got to have all the answers. If you want to ask for a billion dollars, you got to have a vision. If you want to ask for seven trillion dollars, you just say, oh, the next version's going to be slightly better. <laughs> I think it's it's called the inverse proportion law to the hubris of how of how much you're asking for. <laughs> Listen, these, these computers are pretty smart, but if you give me a hundred billion, a trillion dollars, five, five to seven trillion, if you give me seven trillion dollars, they'll get so much smarter. <laughs> the current code that ChatGPT recommended to me was awful. I'll wait for this evolution. The current code that it recommended to you was awful. What do you mean recommended to you? If you're using ChatGPT like you use Google, like give me some code and it gives you code and then you judge ChatGPT based on that interaction, you you can get much better results than if you're doing it that way. Because it's not just recommending code to you. Like to use it right, you have some interaction with it. You give it enough context. Have it analyze its own code. Be in a conversation with it. And are you using ChatGPT 3.5 or ChatGPT 4? Any experience with chat, with GitHub Copilot? Not personally, um, but a lot of developers I know use it. And they, I, like, I've heard anywhere from, like, the good developers I know say it's like a 20 to 30% improvement in their productivity. The shitty programmers that I know, <laughs> the, the lazy ones, they say it's like a 60 to 70% in their productivity. So if you have a kick-ass coder, they're still going to get improvements. But if you have a mediocre coder, they're going to get better improvements. But yeah, but it's apparently quite good. <laughs> paint, paint modder, I got this. <laughs> Just, it's seven trillion. Yeah, source camp. It's seven. It's five to seven trillion. So to be clear, Sam's not asking for seven trillion dollars to to make ChatGPT. Like it's not for the software company or even the 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 compute to buy from Microsoft. It's to build a chip company that dwarfs NVIDIA. So NVIDIA right now, their market cap is, is like more than a number of countries' GDPs put together because the company was asleep at the wheel and they basically seeded GPU manufacturing to a single company. <laughs> And when this AI shit took off, they were the only company making chips that, you know, and had the software that, that the community was using. So what Sam Altman's saying is, if if we want to... So, so here's the deal. Apparently, this is, this is from what I understand from the geeky folks I, I, I have talked to, to do the quality of video that the, the Sora stuff... The, you know, the Sora video that everyone's losing their minds over, it's apparently 16 A100s of GPU power. <laughs> and, it's, and, and it's like to render a minute of video is an hour of rendering time on 16 A100s. 
So I think it's like four or five bucks a minute of video, which if you're used to runway ML, you're like, I thought that was expensive. Um, I don't know if it's going to be that. I don't like that could be bullshit, but I think it's pretty pricey. So I think Sam's seven trillion is why don't we make some specialized chips that are specialized for the way we do things? And then let's increase production of those beyond the world capacity right now. It's the CUDA ecosystem that really sets them apart. I don't know if you're serious about that or if um, if that's a joke. <clears throat> you need to build context for code recommendations. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, side hustle, Mimi. You can't just go... Listen, if you're using ChatGPT like Google... Oh, it's expensive to do compute. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, it's expensive to do compute. So, so if you look at, if you look at, actually, if you join the AI salon and go in the mechanics guild and talk to Pate about TPUs versus GPUs, and then if you go play with, if you go to grok.com, g-r-o-q.com, right now, g-r-o-q.com, not the same grok as Elon Musk's chatty McChat thing. It's, it's a tool that looks like ChatGPT. It's not a software demo. It's a hardware demo. So if you go to grok.com right now and just do a, just do a ChatGPT-like thing, you'll see how fast it is. It's like 500, and, 500 plus tokens per second. So it's like 350, 375 words a second. It's doing the, the response. Um, that's a hardware demo. They're demoing their crazy efficient chips that are, all they do is large language models. They can't do diffusion models. They can't do, they can't make your game faster. What they can do is they can make large language models super fast. So if Sam Altman wants to take that $7 trillion and design a whole suite of chips, all dedicated to the specific kinds of compute that, that they need as efficiently as possible, then all of a sudden, compute costs drop dramatically and everybody benefits. It also makes them, <laughs> you know, they, they, they become, like that becomes a competitive, insurmountable. <laughs> there, that was weird. Imagine Sam practicing in the mirror saying with a straight face, I need seven trillion dollars, please. I I thought it was I thought it was fucking insanity that he was saying he needed a hundred billion. That was just the rumors. That I mean that was just the reporting. Was that, you know, when he got fired he was over asking for a hundred billion dollars after Microsoft gave him ten. <sighs> Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy amount of scale, but we'll see. We will see. I'm serious. NVIDIA didn't make objectively better hardware for a while, but their libraries are better. Yeah, that's that's what I've heard, Pate, is that the de the developers I know and um, George Hotz, if you know him, was talking about that. Like he George Hotz tried to do some AI stuff with AMD chips and couldn't. Because the software sucked. The software libraries were bad. So yeah, it's not that NVIDIA stuff's better. It's that their their software worked. Uh, it's nothing more than a probabilistic model that doesn't think yet. 4-2-M-O. Okay. That, that dismissive, it's nothing more than a probabilistic model. Keep, keep using it. The, the more you use these tools, yes, they're a probab probabilistic model. It doesn't mean they're just parroting back the shit they've seen. It doesn't mean they're copying and pasting. And the minute you add reasoning on top of the probabilistic model, the dismissiveness that is in that phrase, it's just a probabilistic model. Yeah, exactly. I understand, but how do you define thinking? Exactly. Who was it today? Someone today was just talking about some big scientist. T 
today was just thought was just talking about this. That he said that the way the probabilistic model works is essentially how our brains work. <laughs> he says, by definition, it's thinking. The only thing it's not doing right now is reasoning. And the minute it does reasoning, go look at the David Shapiro video on QSTAR. Go look up QSTAR and look at the, the diagrams on how that shit works. It's really cool. The, the, I don't know if I have a visual in my head. I, I could probably go find the graphic, but the way, the way QSTAR works is, so you got a large language model, right? And it's, it, it's got a probability. And it can, let's say it can go in one of four directions, right? So you put in a prompt and it's got a probability that it can go here, 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 or here. So what, how QSTAR works is it says, okay, I'm, my, goal, my goal is over here and I'm here. And I'm going to take one of these four actions. Boop! And it takes the action. And then it measures what was the quality. Is the quality of the action that it took in the direction of that thing or farther away from it? And if it's in the direction of it, it gets a higher score. And if it's in the other direction, it gets a lower score. So the way I think about it is, is very much like card counting. If you've ever learned about blackjack card counting... There's a system where if, if it's, you know, if tens are face cards, it, it's plus one. And if it's uh, whatever, seven or lower, it's minus one or something like that. And all you're doing when you're card counting is you're keeping track. Are you positive or are you negative? And is it, you know, above the delta, right? Is it like plus five, plus 10, minus five, minus 10? And so that's how QSTAR is working. So it's, it's trying to move forward toward a goal and it gets you know, better, 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 that score is going up, it's in the right direction, then all of a sudden it hits a wall. And now it has to like go around that wall. And so it's just, it's just, so that's what it's doing. None of the current shit, none of the current LLMs are doing that at all. The current LLMs are just going, here's your answer, splat, <laughs> take it or leave it. So the minute it can figure out if, it, if what it did was good or what it's doing is in the right direction, the game changes. Because then it can start doing shit like math. First, you need to make a system to understand the idea of a sentence. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Seven trillion dollars. Oh, no, that's hilarious. Is that true? Shop pen. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have met my wife without AOL. <laughs> That's awesome. That's good, Brandon. <laughs> Joker. Seven trillion dollars will buy. Wait, two. Is it billion? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Two hundred thirty-three billion, three hundred thirty-three million, three hundred thirty-three thousand, three hundred thirty-three H one hundred GPUs. Yeah, a trillion dollars is a staggering amount of money. Seven trillion dollars is like. What are they going to do? Buy a fucking country? Just take it, pave it and put the, the chip plant on it? We're going to buy England. <laughs> we'll use all that, uh, the tidal power. We'll buy Amsterdam and use all their, their tidal technology to power our, our chip manufacturing facility. I don't know what they're going to do. It's crazy. It's crazy, 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 crazy. All right. What do you want to do? What do you want to do here? We can we can go look at shit. Are you in New York City? Did you make an AI assistant app like 10 years ago? Um, I was in New York City for lots of years. I was a co-founder of Agency.com back in the mid-90s. I left. I sold Agency.com in 2002. Moved out of the city in like 2003 maybe. And then left for left, I moved north of the city and then moved out to Denver or to, I moved to Boulder first, moved to Boulder in 2011. And I've been out here ever since. I'm in Denver right now. 
Um, I don't think I made an AI assistant. I started, so I've been doing, my current company is called Storyvine, which is an automated um, video storytelling platform. We've been around for 11 and a half years. So I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, it's not a bad idea, Brandon. I might do that. If ChatGPT's math is right, it it analyzed. Well, if if it depends on the math. If ChatGPT's math, if ChatGPT is using Code Interpreter and it wrote good Python code, then it can do math. But sometimes Code Interpreter, what what I found with Code Interpreter is you'll upload some data to it. It loads. Um, it loads the data from the your CSV file into a data frame in in the virtual in the in the uh, container, and then it writes Python code to analyze the code that's in the data frame. But what I've noticed is that sometimes it like puts other shit in the data frame <laughs> that it just makes up, or it'll just drop a whole chunk of shit out of it. And so then it's analyzing stuff. You're like, but wait, where's the other numbers? And it was like, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I got that wrong. Let me try again. And it's just, it's just wrong again. So it's just like, I just, the, the reasoning capability of chat GPT right now is just stupid. So, so just assume it can't do math. Oops, got cut off. Could $7 trillion buy set up a satellite to manufacture chips? You mean a satellite like up in the, up in the planets to manu... I, I don't know if you gain anything by manufacturing in zero gravity, but maybe. But $7 trillion could buy you a lot of fucking satellites. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I assume what we're talking about here is big, giant, sprawling, you know, Tesla-scale factories. Seven trillion won't fit in a calculator. Can ChatGPT analyze a website and give suggestions on how to improve it? It can do that all day long. It's actually good at that. Um, and Gemini Pro 1.5, I don't have access to it yet, but the people that have got access to it right now, they're doing things like <laughs> recording screen sessions of them using applications and having Gemini watch the video and suggest um, process improvements. So I think that I think that once you once you start to get like million token context windows with multimodal stuff, you're gonna be able to use all sorts of inputs to do all sorts of crazy shit. But yeah, chat GPT right now is good. You can give it code and tell it to suggest how to improve things. You can give it code and tell it to change it and you know, make it look better or different. Um, you can probably just upload an interface and have it, you know, describe it and maybe even describe ways to improve it, improve usability. Yeah, it's good at that stuff. Good, good, good. Is it okay to have the humble opinion, the difference between... Wait, is it okay to have your humble... Oh, humble opinion... The difference between an employee and an employer with AI. I don't quite understand the question. If, if you're saying, can AI completely replace humans right now? In most jobs, the answer is no. But... A lot of businesses that I know that are starting to get their heads around AI are looking at their employees saying, who's AI literate? And if they're making, if they're prioritizing employees, they're prioritizing toward the AI literate employees. Now, depending on the job, as these tools get better, the ability to completely replace a role or function of an employee today is going to be very possible. 
I think I think it's something like I heard this stat today that like 80 percent of the jobs like the data jobs that people do today are repetitive. Um, like low contribution, just like repetitive cog in the wheel kind of tasks. That's the perfect kind of thing that AI is going to be able to automate first. So the people that are getting AI literate who are expanding their skill set, they're, they're going to be in much better shape than people who are sitting on the sidelines. That This channel is all about, we can debate whether AI is good or bad, evil or genius, um, janky and unusable or brilliant and fucking profound. We can debate that shit all day, every day. And the AI is still coming. It's not going away. All of these peripheral conversations about the validity of AI and what's it going to do and is it good or bad that it replaces shitty repetitive jobs? Is all th Those are all independent conversations from the fact that it's coming. And quite frankly, it's here. It's just that not that many people know it yet. And the tools are not that, they're not at the level that it's a threat on the surface. Would you ever let an AI robot operate on you? Fuck yes. Are you kidding me? Did Go, Cap, Captain Mutt, go read about the robot that they built that Elon Musk had to build for Neuralink. It's insane what it does. So they drill a hole in your skull. And then in your brain, you got your neurons and you got your little blood vessels, right? And what Neuralink is, is 60 or 120. I forget, I don't, I forget how big the bundles are at this point. I think they're 60. There's 60, um, what are they called? Uh, well, little wires, little probes. There's 60 little probes that have to go in your brain to connect to different neural pathways, right? They have to insert them in between the blood vessels so that they don't poke into one and give you a stroke. <laughs> so, so... And, and the hole is like, I don't know, the size of a, I don't know. They, they, I think they were originally going to be the size of a pencil eraser. I think they're now about the size of a quarter. But whatever, it's a small hole. And so this robot looks into your brain and it actually steers those things around your blood vessels, like 60 of them. It just inserts them one by one, steering them around the thing. So, yeah, would, it, would I let something with that level of precision operate on me rather than some guy that maybe had too much coffee or not enough or went out on a bender the night before? Sure. <laughs> yes. Do I want to be the first guy operated on by that robot? No. <laughs> but by the time a, a non-clinical trial person is going to be operated on by that robot, it'll have gone through a bunch of shit. I had surgery in early 2023 with a da Vinci in-room physician and a remote co-pilot in Florida. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely, I would. Absolutely. Like, yes. Yes. I mean, this is no different to me than... Would I, would I like a... Uh, you know... Would I find it acceptable to talk to a robot if the robot actually answered the phone and could solve my customer service problem. Yes. Yes. I would, <laughs> yes. I would, I would gladly talk to a robot that's like, hi Kyle, how can I help you today? Oh, well, I tried to open my refrigerator door and it fell off in my hand. What the fuck am I supposed to do now? Oh, that's really unfortunate, Mr. Shannon. That sounds, <laughs> That sounds like something. We got to get a technician out there right away, don't we? Well, yeah, if you don't want my food to go bad. All right, let's go ahead and do that. That technician's been booked. They're on their way. Would I prefer that experience to the one that I went through when that actually happened? Yeah. 
Because that was three weeks of fucking hell. <laughs> Did the pr surgeon press shift enter? <laughs> exactly. That was a joke from last night. There's a, there's a kind of funny uh, UX experience on uh, Microsoft Copilot and the neighboring little thing called Microsoft Notebook, which if you didn't see it last night, I'll let you go discover it for yourself. It's special. But yeah, fuck yes. But I also have a, uh, I have a world ID. You're like, what's a world ID, Kyle? I don't know what a world ID, wait, what's, what? The hell was that? That was bizarre. It said your live will end in a minute, but I had to like put a puzzle piece. Weird. I spoke with GPT-4 for the first time today. It's often awesome. Oh, that's great, Apple user. Oh, yeah, you've been in here for a while. Yeah, I'm telling you, GPT-4 is just a different thing. I got on Copilot co today and did the exact same thing. So frustrating. Yeah, so if you don't know, in Copilot right now, <clears throat> there's two modes. There's Copilot. You go to copilot.microsoft.com. And then there's Copilot, and that's just like ChatGPT. And... You type in a prompt and you hit return. And then if you want to put a line break in your prompt, like if you want to go, hey, based on this um, thing I'm about to paste in here, shift return, two line breaks, and then you paste in a blob and then shift return and you give it the rest of your prompt. And then you hit return and it enters it. Right next to Copilot is this thing called Notebook. And notebook is a hor it's like a side by side like instead of your prompt being on the bottom your prompt is on the side. And that one you when you hit return it gives you a line break and when you hit shift return it enters it. It's the complete opposite action of the thing that's right beside it. It's in it's it's insanity. TikTok did that to me today in my life. Oh, good uh, investor friendly agent cuz that was crazy. I thought I might have been getting booted out of here forever because I said, whatever, something, something stupid. <laughs> you can make money with ChatGPT. Mm, 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 mm. I want customer service like the Alaskan Airways where their chatbot made a new policy for bereavement. I didn't hear about that one. New security feature? Probably because of AI. And people making deep fakes. Wow. Yeah, maybe. That's possible. But when we get agents, because these things have vision, all of these captchas and slide the puzzle piece to the puzzle piece, all of the, the AIs... So... <laughs> The AIs are going to be able to do all that. So there's going to have to be a completely new method. Like all of the current security, two-factor authentic, all that bullshit is going to just get obliterated in the next three or four years. So it's going to be crazy. It's going to be, I'm, I'm telling you, 2023, last normal year. All right. Oh, that was Canada Air, and it was actually eight, eight months ago. Got my big presentation about school AI tomorrow. Mr. K, good luck with that. So everybody, uh, tap the screen. Wish, wish, wish Mr. K good luck. So Mr. K is a teacher in central Pennsylvania. I grew up in York, Pennsylvania, so East, Eastern York High School, Mr. K. So just south of you there, buddy. That's, that's how you got this fucking genius pile of gray matter um i guess pitch into the school board tomorrow about um we should be using ai what mr k is gonna go tell them is um hey listen there's these things out there called large language models and there are students our students are large language models and it's our job to get language in their Frustrating little brains. And I don't know if you've heard this, but another thing came along called a large language model that are these computer programs that are the most remarkable knowledge systems in the history of humanity. And right now, 
we're not allowed to use them. And so what I would like to suggest to us as a community is maybe we should take these large language models and help these large language models learn faster and better and different. As if these new things were going to be around when these kids graduate. So wish Mr. K good fucking luck. Yes. Go tell them. Go blow their minds and go tell them this shit isn't going away. These are not plagiarism machines. These, these are not cheating machines. These are humanity amplifying tools. Our kids will learn faster, deeper, better. They will be more passionate about shit. Their education will be more personalized. Holy fucking shit, you don't want me in the room. <laughs> be like, listen, dipsticks. So please, if you're in the AI salon, go into the Education Guild and give Mr. K some shout outs and some good loving. Education Guild Monday night meeting right before the AI Learning Lab. Awesome. Fantastic. Thank you, Brandon. That's great. So I keep talking about this salon. What the hell is that? So if you are curious about AI, or if you're kind of like me where you're like, I kind of think this AI thing's a big deal, but everyone else in my life seems to think it's not a big deal. Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. You're just hanging out with the wrong crowd. You're hanging out with bad influencers. Love that. Humanity amplifying. Kyle for president 2028. This channel. So, okay. So if you don't know, if, if you're new here, <clears throat> there's a pile of people in here. If, if it seems like there's people in here that kind of know each other and have inside jokes and are answering your questions, those are the people that show up here regularly. So if you don't know, I do these things seven nights a week. Why? Because I know how to make good life choices. <laughs> the irregulars, the ones that show up here every night, are living proof that this AI stuff are humanity amplifiers. Because to a person, the people that just show up here regularly and are in this conversation... In what conversation? It doesn't seem like you've said anything tonight. Yeah, exactly. You know why they're here? Because while I'm rambling, they're playing with AI. And if I mention some tool, they go Google it. Oh, that's kind of cool. And then they're playing with it. And they're playing with it. And they're doing this. And they're doing that. And they're like, oh, shit. All of a sudden, oh, I can make a really good image. And then they share that image in the AI salon. And then someone else sees that image. They're like, how did you do that? I'm like, oh, I don't know. I, I uploaded this image and then I had it do that. And I, oh my God, that's amazing. And then they're talking to one another. And, and, and what's happening is they're getting reignited creatively. Like, like, you know, the human spark, that spark that's like, I got something to say. I, I want to put something into the world. You know that thing you had when you were seven? And then the world fucking beats it out of you. <laughs> People that are playing with these tools regularly, that like that that fire is reigniting. And they're like, oh, what what if I did this? What if if I did that, could I do this? And so I I get to witness it in here every night. Everyone who shows up here every night, I'm the quiet one, a new irregular. Awesome. Yeah, Jim SC, I know. You've been in here a lot. It's great. is we're all getting to witness and support and celebrate one another as we're rediscovering who we are. That's what these tools are. Can they be used for bad? Might they do bad things? Yeah. In the meantime, until it shuts down the grid and ruins our lives forever, why don't we see what they are? Why don't we play with them? That's what this group is. So if you go there, it's going to take you to a link tree. You can, there's merch there. You can buy t-shirts that support this group because this doesn't cost anything. 
There's a similar channel out there that kind of does what I do. He created a community. He's charging 500 bucks for it. This is free. Not like free to get into level one. And the people that are here are fucking remarkable. Thank you, Sherry D. Thank you so much. Sherry D's one of them. 30 year nursing career. She's now making music videos <laughs> for bands. Like really good ones. That's exactly what's happening. I felt like job the job market is trash and this gives me hope. Yep. Exactly, Ron Diggity. Exactly. And what's the hope? I don't know. What's this thing going to give you that's going to be the thing that's going to help you survive all this upheaval? I don't know, but here's what I know. If you're sitting on the sidelines with your arms crossed, yeah, these tools ain't all that. You're not going to be in as good a shape as someone who's hanging out in here figuring out what the hell this stuff can do. Promise you that. So if you go there, the first link says the AI Salon Community. Click on that, and it's going to take you to here. Welcome to the AI Salon. And you know all your friends that are like, you know, Sally, um... We need to talk. So here's the thing. I know we said we wanted to go out to drinks tonight, but this is kind of a little bit of an intervention. I don't have a drinking problem. No, it's not about the booze. We like no, we like drinking. It's about the AI. Could you we we we've talked and we've decided that you talk about AI. It's all you talk about anymore. And um how do we say this? Um we want the old Sally back. Um could, could we just do some melon poppers and, and <laughs> so if your friends are doing that to you, this group is not that. This group is like, oh, you're really into AI? Cool. Come on. Oh, you're really curious about it? Cool. Come on. And it, notice this is not a single person heading off into the abyss. One of, the, one of the realities right now, I promise you, I promise you to a person, every single person in the AI salon right now feels like they are behind and undereducated and underskilled. Like, like every, someone else in this community has to know more than they do. Every single person feels like they can't keep up. They don't, they're not good at this shit. <laughs> They like the stuff that they're doing, but they apologize for it because it's not enough to a person. I'm trying to eradicate the apologizing in this group, by the way, because what the people are doing in this group is remarkable because what they're doing is they're playing. And that's the only skill you need right now. So this group will welcome you in with open arms. And then here's my request. So if you're here... Read about who we are and why we do what we do. And then what I really want you to take in, like I really want you to take this in, like like as passionate as I'm talking right now, I want you to really read the values. So the values here are not like this is who we want to be. The values here of this is who this community already is. And the thing that's happening here is this community is starting to, to grow quickly. And, and it's, it's starting to accelerate. And I've grown, you know, I've start, I started a company that grew really big, really fast. I started a, a, an organization kind of like this one in 1994 called the World Wide Web Artist Consortium that grew really big, really fast. And one of the things that happens when you grow really big, really fast is you, you kind of lose the good shit. Because the new people overwhelm the old people and just it just becomes chaos. So the reason I talk about these values most nights, I, I think every night, is that you shouldn't join this community if you don't dig these values because this is who this community already is. <laughs> a 
Okay, so the first one's curiosity. Like, we want people in here that are curious, not cynical, right? You can be cynical, but just be funny about it. Like, if you're cynical, like a stand-up comedian is cynical, like like Tom Segura or, or Doug Stanhope, cool, that's fine. But in here, you should be curious about this AI stuff. Huh, wonder how that works. Whoa, what would happen if I did this, right? Next, next, next value is, is generosity. So don't be stingy with like, oh, I just learned something. I'm going to keep that to myself. No, no, I just learned something. Let me see if anyone else knows that too. Here's how I did this. Anyone else? Oh, how'd you do that? Oh, here's how I did that. Ba, ba, ba. A lot of back and forth, right? Generosity. Exploration. People that are excited to like strap on the backpack and just head into the unknown. Because that's all what we're what we're all going to be facing for the next five years is a lot of unknown. So you want to be around people who, even if they're not comfortable in that scenario, are willing to do it. This is a community of people willing to step into the unknown. Do you know how fucking inspiring that is to be hanging out with people that are willing to do that? You know how few people in life are willing to do that? So, so that's who this group is. Collaboration's another one. You know, willing to do it together. Inclusion. Like, I don't care if you've got, you know, six hours experience with AI or six decades experience with AI. It doesn't matter. All points of view right now are contributing to everyone's understanding because no one knows anything. Everything's changing too fast. Empathy is a big one. People are scared. People are angry. People are dismissive. There's been some of that in here tonight. Oh, you know, these things are just predictive engines. Well, they're not perfect. Well, they can't do high level coding. Okay. Understand. But understand that sitting underneath that kind of bravado is fear. Underneath that anger is insecurity. Oh no, what's gonna happen if, if, if this thing I've been doing for 20 years all of a sudden is irrelevant? It's very real, right? So imagine being in a community of people who tap into that and are willing to hear that and not just interact with your dismissiveness or your anger, but are willing to say, oh, yeah, what's really going on here? Well, I've been doing all this thing and I don't feel like learning a new career. Yeah, that must suck. Come on in. Let's, let's see if we can figure something out together. Like, that's who this group is. And then the last one is gratitude. Like, actively, actively acknowledging one another. If someone, if someone around you is generous enough to tell you how they're doing something or give you a leg up, thank them. <laughs> the more bulgy I get. That's funny, Corey Sandler. <laughs> I'm on the, put me on, put me in coach. I'm ready to play. <laughs> oh man. So anyway. That's the values of this group. And I, I know that was a little a little preachy, but fuck it. I mean, I mean, I'm very serious about how remarkable this group is and how much, how committed I am to keeping it that way. Um, I mostly only use an iPad and my iPhone. Can I get into AI stuff with just that? Absolutely, PrezDog. So PrezDog. So you can, right now, just using... Safari, um, go to chat.openai.com. I would strongly recommend subscribing to ChatGPT Plus, which is their 20 buck a month um, subscription to upgrade you to ChatGPT4. You can also download the ChatGPT app. Make sure you download the official one from OpenAI. Make sure that the company that makes ChatGPT is OpenAI. Anything other than that is a faker app that's out to rip you off. But yeah, you can absolutely do all this stuff right there. I would also download the Pi app. I think Perplexity has an app. I would download the Perplexity app. I think Claude has an app. 
from Anthropic. So yes, absolutely. Okay, so when you come in here, so if, if you if you dig what, what we're about, cool. The next thing I want you to do is introduce yourself. Take that value of generosity and come in and introduce yourself. Messer Schmidt said, hi, that's a little stingy. <laughs> But he at least introduced himself, right? I think a he. But ideally what you do is you come in here and you say, hey, here's who I am. Here's what I'm doing. Here's what I dig in my life. Here's what I've done in my life. Here's where I am with AI. Sure would be swell to find someone who blank, does what, does something, knows something about this, is willing to just help someone out, Right? And then you can check out our events. And if you go to this, this third link, the, the two links below, introduce yourself, is this thing called AI Launchpad and Tools. And that's a page that I personally curate. Wait, Prezdog, I'm old, 59, just a truck driver and a pilot, but AI seriously intrigues me. Prezdog, I'm 58, <laughs> and, and I... <laughs> I'm just a I'm I'm just a guy that that's playing around with, uh, with with storytelling tools and technology. The the what you what you do and have done is irrelevant to what's going on right now. If AI seriously intrigues me, I mean seriously. Okay, you're a truck driver. Okay, Prez Dog, you're gonna fucking love this. Go, h hang on, hang on. Go, so you only have an iPad and an iPhone, right? So you got Bluetooth in your rig. So I want you to, you can do this with either the ChatGPT app or you can get this app called Pi, P-I. It's, it's Pi Personal Assistant. And the, the icon looks like that. It's, it's green, two green letters, P-I. Go get that app. So... It's, it's like ChatGPT, except it's optimized for conversation. And so, oh, you have the pie. Okay, cool. Perfect. So I don't know if you use it. If, and I don't know if you use it like this, but go on your long runs, two, two hour drive, four hour drive, eight hour drive, whatever it is, right? And just start having a conversation with Pi. It's connected to the internet and it's designed to talk. And, you know, so there you are. And if you don't know it, that little icon right there, the little phone icon, puts it into conversation mode. I'm on a long trip and I'm a little bored. Can you help me come up with a way to pass the time? Sure thing, Kyle. Long trips can definitely be a bit tedious sometimes. Let's see if we can spice things up a bit. How about we play a game of Would You Rather? I'll give you two <laughs> options for different scenarios and you have to choose one. Ready to get started. Now, I think what I'd rather do is you tell me a, a news story that happened today, but keep the details from me and see if I can guess about it. All right, Kyle, here's a news story that happened today. I'll keep the details hidden, so you'll have to use your detective skills to figure it out. A major event occurred in a region that has been in the headlines recently, leading to a significant loss of life and injuries. It involved a large group of people and a convoy <laughs> of aid. Yeah, yeah, I know what that one is. I'm not going to talk about that one. I'm not getting booted off TikTok for that. But anyway, <laughs> you can, you know... It can make up games for you, can talk to you, you can have deep, con you know, contemplative conversations with it. You can have it teach you something. You can have it explain books to you, movies to you, I, just all sorts of stuff. So um, that would be a really, like having, having Pi teach you about AI while you're driving would be kind of, kind of wild and cool because the other thing about those pie conversations is you're having these conversations it's recording them all in text 
The other thing you can do with ChatGPT is if you've got ChatGPT4, it's got Dali in it. So you do a similar sort of thing with ChatGPT4, but you can have it make images. I'm on a long road trip right now and I'm driving through mid Ohio. Can you make me a picture of a blue semi truck driving down the highway in mid Ohio? And so it's off now rendering an image. So, so not only can you have a conversation, you could be making art while you're driving. <laughs> Now, why you would want to do that, I don't know. <laughs> but you would at least start to learn the capabilities of these things and what's possible. And see what it does. See what it comes up with. Look, <laughs> there's our... a picture of a blue semi-truck driving down the highway in mid-Ohio. <laughs> it really captures the sunny day and the essence of a road trip through the Midwest. How's your road trip going so far? You can check out the images in our conversation history. It's going okay. I'm a little bored, though. Can you come up with a game for us to play? Sure. How about a classic game of 20 questions? It's perfect for road trips. I'll think of something. There you go. So, cool, right? Anyway, so yes. Yes, get curious about it. Here, what, what's, what's happening in here, Prez Dog? pretty consistently is people kind of come in and they're like, I think I want to learn about AI. And they're like, I don't know anything. Help. And then very often what they realize is everyone they talk to feels the same way. Even if they've been doing this AI stuff for a while, like people might know more than them, but they're like, Oh, everyone's kind of trying to figure this out. And there's something really comforting in that. And then if you haven't had it yet, you know, <laughs> at some point you'll have what I call your Kevin McAllister moment, right? From Home Alone. Where these tools will do something that is so good or profound or just unexpected that you're like, I didn't know it could do that, right? And it's, <clears throat> and then the, the more you use these tools, the more you have this sort of rolling series of Kevin McAllister moments. And if you keep pushing and keep playing and keep sort of figuring out where the edges of your interests are, all of a sudden you'll discover something you're either good at or you were super passionate about when you were younger or something where all of a sudden it like it will reignite something in you or it'll, it, it, it'll ignite something new in you. And you'll be like, oh, well, let me explore this. Let me explore that. And I'm just I see it in here every flip and night. What are your thoughts on AI and automation in homes? Um, my, my thought on any sort of complex systems like home automation systems are super cool. If you're an Uber nerd, right? Because all the home automation systems, they've all got their own proprietary fucking systems and they're all incompatible with each other and they all have really shitty interfaces. And so most home automation ner nerds started with this system and then added some components from that system and then they've got the their Sonos system over here and they got that system over there and they got their GE LED dial of color light bulbs over here and none of them talk to each other. And so only the quantum physicist in the house that put the shit together can deal with it. <laughs> right? And so I think what AI is going to do is it's going to simplify those complex systems where when we have, say, an autonomous agent that you can talk to, like Pi, and you can just say, hey, go figure this shit out. Make it warmer 
and make it green in here and turn on the TV and turn down the radio and make the lights blink purple. <laughs> and then just, bleep, <laughs> just start doing it. Then it'll be cool. So, I don't know if anyone's built that yet, but I like I haven't touched home automation shit because I don't feel like spending seventeen hours a week debugging why my light won't turn on in the, in, in the you know next to the the reading nook. I had no interest in it, but if I can just say AI, figure that shit out, I'll just go plug some shit in. I'll, I'll give you access to all the shit I plugged in and you figure it out. Then I'm in. I did ask ChatGPT 3.5 to find me cheap flights and it actually worked. And that, that's actually remarkable because 3.5 isn't connected to the internet. So how did it do that? You sure? Or did you use Copilot? If you want, if you want access to ChatGPT 4, for the underlying engine GPT-4 that's connected to the internet, but you can't afford the 20 bucks a month for ChatGPT, go to copilot.microsoft.com. I've watched you many nights. I've learned a lot just listening to you. Oh, that's awesome, Prez Dog. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, th I thought I've seen you in here before. I fucking love that you're a trucker and that you're you're trying to figure this shit out. I, 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 I just, I feel like anyone who's willing to go into that unknown uncomfortable space and just try to figure some shit out is going to be gifted like all sorts of new opportunities so i think i think where you are right now is like perfect like i'm intrigued by this but this is what i do like that whatever the limiting beliefs are of however you've defined yourself right that that maybe this is out of your reach drop that shit this this is this is actually really important November 30th, 2022, when ChatGPT launched, here's, here's the big deal about it from, from, from where I sit. Prior to ChatGPT, if you wanted to do this AI shit, you kind of had to be a geek. You, like, it didn't hurt if you went to MIT. Having the Stanford mathematics degree, probably a good thing if you're trying to figure out TensorFlow. And, and embeddings and mathematical weightings and probability matrices. ChatGPT does for machine learning and AI what the World Wide Web did for the internet. So prior to the World Wide Web, the internet was command line, it was researchers, it was scientists, it was academics. And then the World Wide Web comes along where you can sort of point and click on hyperlinks and the only skill you need to be able to use the internet is this. Click, 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 click. ChatGPT does the same thing for all this stuff. All you need to be able to do is talk to it. And I think because of terms like prompt engineering is really important. You've got to be a prompt engineer. It makes it sound really fucking intimidating. What prompt engineering is, is... Use your words good to ask for shit you want good. <laughs> and then the machines will give you good stuff back. <laughs> like, that's what it is. Now, there's all sorts of ways you can do prompting. One of them is you can do prompt engineering and very structured prompting and approach it like a systems analyst. Another way you can use prompts is just talk to these things. As if you were talking to someone who could do shit. Hey, could you do that shit? Sure, here's that shit. That's not very good. Could you do that shit better? Sure, here's better that shit. <laughs> like, that's it. And if you're willing to just dive into it and go, fuck it, I'll just try. I think the rewards are insane. I've been missing these sessions. You have really changed my, my AI life. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carl. Welcome, welcome back. Yeah, just keep coming. Keep coming. Keep hanging out. This is, um, <laughs> use your words good. Exactly, Lori. You got to use your words good. And you want to know something fucking amazing? If you're not so good with the words, say to ChatGPT, hey, 
I want to do a thing, but I'm not so good with the words. Can you help me come up with a prompt that will get you to do this thing better? And guess what? It will. In fact, when you ask ChatGPT to make you an image, it doesn't use your prompt. You want to see something? Okay, here we are. ChatGPT. ChatGPT4. We're just in normal ChatGPT. I love the way Kyle talks about playing around to find out and learn. I think it's the only... I mean, I appreciate that. Thank you, Winston. I think it's the only, the only thing that does not seem like insanity to me right now is playing because it, it, it actually seems like insanity to me right now to try to get your head around all of what's happening and try to master any of these tools. It, it's just, it's, it's stupid because they're just, they're changing too fast. There's too many of them. So, so don't take it so seriously. It, like this is a rare moment in history where, where we get to just play with this shit. Okay. So I'm in regular chat GPT. I'm going to say, I'll do, I'll do my classic. Make me a me a wide photo of a green 70s muscle car in an abandoned factory. All right. So I did those words pretty good. They were pretty good words. They were not bad. <laughs> they're, they're, they're not great words, right? Green 70s muscle car in an abandoned factory. A wide photo. So we're going we're gonna to let it make its little picture here. We'll see what it comes up with. I love to listen to you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Side hustle, Mimi. Have a good night, everyone. I'm falling asleep at the keys. Good night. Good night, Mimi. <laughs> it's, it is my job. To, I'm, like, you can take Xanax or you can listen to the AI Learning Lab. I'll knock you right out. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> Come on, chat GPT. What's going on with this image? Show me the image. Where my image? Where my image? I used it to fix my res resume. Perfect use case. Um, let's stop this and restart it. Uh, I'll do try again. Uh, 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 when will Emo have an app? Um, I would imagine Emo is so powerful. So by the way, Emo, so if you don't know what Emo is, Emo is a tool that Alibaba actually came out with um, that will take a still image and a recording of someone talking and not only animate the lips, but like fully animate the head, eyebrows, all the facial expressions. Um, and it came out yesterday as a white paper. Um, Mr. Studio, it is it, like it, it was one of those white papers that so many people are talking about it that I would be surprised if by the end of the weekend, there wasn't some um, Google collab notebook that you could just, you know, get up and running and have it running. I, like, I would imagine that there's probably some version of that right now. Um, anyway, I was talking before about prom prompting <clears throat> and prompt engineering and how I, I think that's that term is doing beginners a big disservice that get intimidated by it and that you can just use simple words and, and these tools are actually getting better at helping us. So the way ChatGPT works, I typed in, I created, oh uh, wait, I, I typed in, make me a wide photo of a green 70s muscle car in an abandoned factory. If I click on this image, in the upper right hand corner is the information button. Here's the prompt that ChatGPT wrote. A wide photo depicting a vibrant green muscle car positioned in the midst of an abandoned factory setting. The factory's interior is marked by a vast, desolate space filled with remnants of industrial machinery, 
rusted with co- rusted and coated with decades of neglect. Sunlight streams through the broken, painless windows, illuminating the dust particles in the air and creating a dramatic interplay of light and shadow. The muscle car, with its glossy, well-maintained exterior, stands in stark cr- contrast to the surrounding decay, offering a striking... I, I mean, this is fucking impressive, right? Kyle is my new Tonight Show theme song. (laughs) Um, Isn't that crazy? So I typed in a shitty prompt and it said, I got you, boss. Here you go. Here's an incredibly well-written, incredibly descriptive prompt that's going to generate that. So don't be intimidated by this shit. Just play with it. You'll be surprised. Oh, by the way, did you guys know Suno... Suno AI that does songy stuff. I didn't know this. I found this out last night after I was leaving or after I left. Now available V3 Alpha Access for Pro and Premier members. I don't think I'm a Pro member. Sign in with Google. Did I pay for this? Maybe I paid for this. What's new? V3 Access. Extended max song length, faster song generation. Where? Custom mode, V2. Yeah, I don't think I've got access to it. But anyway, if you haven't seen, I love to, oh, thank you. Um, let's see. Country song about driving my big rig through mid-Ohio. Yeah, I've only got V2. But anyway, there's a V3 of this that you can do longer song lengths, and apparently it's better. So if if you like making music, but man, this is much faster. Rolling on the Mid Ohio Highway. Let's <laughs> these these could be bad. That's okay. It's not singing. Where's the words? And it didn't do the words for that one. That's funny. Sometimes it doesn't do words. Janky is. Dances in Ohio and... <laughs> yeah. Anyway, new version of Suno out. So if you're into the Suno stuff, go go get the V3 of it. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. All right, everybody. I think I'm going to wind I'm going to wind her down. Um, tomorrow, so a couple of things. Tomorrow, I've got AI office hours on LinkedIn. So if you find my profile on LinkedIn, if you want to hang out during the day, um, it's at 11 a.m. Mountain Time. So 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. Um, and I don't, there's nothing up there right now. So... 
Um, it'll be there in the morning. Just go to my profile. It's there. Oh, yeah. And then tomorrow's Friday night date night. So, oh, Robert Rossi, thank you for the dino. I love that one. That was beautiful. Very generous. Thank you. Um, so you can hang out there. We can do Friday night date night. Also, um, Saturday at noon Pacific, Ann Murphy does her GPT weekend jams. So in the AI salon, and if you're, if you're new here, then don't know what I'm talking about. Go to the salon.ai, click on the very first link on that page. It's a link tree where it says AI Salon Community. And check it out. Under the Technology Guild is Weekend Jams with uh, with Anne, the GPT Jams. Um, so that's Saturday at noon. You should go to those. If you're curious about this shit, you should go to those. Uh, and what else? If you want to support this channel, you can follow me. Five minute goodbyes. <laughs> you can follow the channel. That'll support. You can subscribe to the lives. That supports. You can buy the video series that's in the corner there called Underhyped. If you're actually, especially if you're in a business and you're trying to figure this shit out, um, that video series talks about why AI is a bigger deal than, you know, the people that are dismissing it or demonizing it are kind of missing some of the big picture. And so that's that's what I talk about in that series. And the, and the way that you can really support this channel is just keep showing up here. Well, when, when, when do I show up, Kyle? I don't know. Show up every night. I do. It's generally 8 o'clock mountain every night. Thank you, Winston. I try to keep it consistent. I used to be just chaos. I would just go on any time of day and people were like, I'll, I'll come on whenever you're on, but this is kind of a pain in the ass. And then I thought, yeah, fuck it. Why don't I just do it the same time every night? And it's easy for everyone and easy for me. <laughs> you know. And just show up here. And don't have an agenda. Like, don't even feel like... like I just feel like it's less and less important <laughs> to teach anything on this channel. <laughs> it's called the AI Learning Lab. We want our lessons and we want them now. Teach us now. I feel like the most important thing is just like commit to being in the conversation. Commit to playing. James Kamau, thanks. Thanks for your knowledge share. Kyle, appreciate it. Thank you very much. I appreciate the kind words. Just show up here. If you learn something, great. If you show up here and what I'm talking about is boring the shit out of you, then just hang out here and keep making images or play with perplexity or see if you can get it to do some coding that doesn't actually suck. Take the same prompt and try it in ChatGPT 3.5, ChatGPT 4, Claude, Perplexity, Grok, uh, uh, what else? Um, Poe, all the different models in Poe. Like, just play. Just try different shit out. And go, oh, that was really horrible, but that's kind of amazing. Kyle, tomorrow afternoon, Pete and Leah are going to talk about Mid Journey. Oh, that's awesome, Dr. J. Yeah, so just go to the salon, check out the events, go to the guilds, check out the guilds. They've all got events going on. Oh, there's good. Thank you, Brandon. There's also down at the bottom of the guilds, there's a thing that says community clubs. There's only one community club. It's this group. It's called AILL Irregulars. These are the irregulars. The people that show up here all the time, they're the irregulars. So go there, scroll to the bottom, find community clubs, and hang out in the irregulars. There's a chat area where you can chat, and there's another area where you can share images. And we didn't really do any image sharing tonight, but I'm sure some of you did anyway. You can go in there and troll me. Make funny pictures of me acting like a dum-dum. <laughs> it's, it's a great pastime amongst the irregulars. <clears throat> And just show up. 
just show up, just show up, just show up, just show up. Just play, 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 play. And then talk about it. Why be in a community? So that you can talk about this stuff. Who else should you talk with this stuff about? Strangers? Hey, Jim, how's it going? Hey, it's going okay. Hey, have you played around with any of this AI stuff? Oh, I heard it's evil. Let me show you something cool. Get out your phone. Dink, nink, 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 nink. Write him a song. Make him a picture. Here, let me pick, make, make a picture of your diner. All right, how'd you do that? All right, it's AI. It's cool. Anyway, see you. Have a good day. Tell your friends and family, the ones that tell you not to talk about AI. Fuck them. Tell them anyway. Your coworkers. We're not, you know, we're not allowed to use AI here. What are you, why would you even talk about it? That seems pretty risky. Tell them. <laughs> Jenny's such a rebel. She's just out. She's, you know what she does on the weekends? She's got a Chromebook and she plays with the AI. She plays with the chat GTP. She plays with it all weekend and she comes in here and all her work's done. She gets her work done on the weekends and she comes in here and she just lollygags about. <laughs> Be like Jenny. <laughs> ah! All right. So thank yous. Thank you to the irregulars. So anyone who shows up here more than once. You're saintly because why would you? Um, thank you to the subscribers. Thank you to the mods. Thank you to anyone who gifts me during the during the things. I don't. I I feel like I don't thank you folks enough. The mods who sort of elevate your comments so that I can see them and and comment to them and sort of keep me on the path. Thank you for all of that. And yeah. So, all right, let's see who are we talking to. I'm gonna hold up my little magic mirror here. Who do I see? I see Lord Digital Gods. I see Brandon and Papa JJ. I see Corey Sandler Pottery. You should follow Corey Sandler Pottery. Corey, C O R I, Sandler, S A N D, like Adam. Pottery, like cups and shit. Go follow her. Because she makes awesome pottery. You know what else she makes awesome of? Music. You know what else she, she makes awesome of? Uh, stews. She, she does cooking. You know what else she makes awesome of? Fucking GPTs. She's like a GPT master. She's a, she's a fucking application developer now. She made a GPT last week that will take an image you generate in Dali or anywhere, frankly, and it will automatically add a watermark on it that has a copyright with your name and all rights reserved on it. She's an application developer now. Go follow her. Anyway. Brian Whitney, good to see you. Jane Doe. Christy, good to see you. Mr. IT. Show and tell. Uh nah, I'm 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 crispy. I just wanna I just need to go. I just need to go napping. But you should go check out the Show and Tell channel in the salon, too. There's a whole Show and Tell area now. We have four different channels. One for images, one for songs, one for videos, and one for GPTs. So go check out the Show and Tell area. Kyle, Show and Tell. People are asking, please. Okay, fine. <laughs> See, you, you, just, you just can't. I just, I wish I could quit you. <laughs> Oh, uh, <laughs> robot doing surgery. <laughs> oh, happy leap day. Oh, there was there was a whole bunch of cool leap day things. That one's great. Our road trip, the Dodge Colt station wagon, a genuine lemon. That's flipping awesome. Nice Papa JJ. Win an iPad. What is this? Oh, something created using AI. Yeah, probably. Check out the patch on the uniform. Yep, for sure. That's AI for sure. I need $7 trillion. <laughs> Look, see, Corey Sandler, all rights reserved. See? 
Best way to spend a leap day. Ooh, that's beautiful. Who did that? Cam Catkin. That's gorgeous. Big eyes. Ooh, that's gorgeous. More leap year. Yeah, happy leap day, everybody. Class salon. Ooh, that's gorgeous. Megan. My head is a jungle. Nice. Wow. Yeah, really inspiring. I mean, th that's the whole thing is, you know, just be in a community with people that are doing shit like this. It'll, it'll light you up. Wow, that's awesome. I do lots of videos and pics when I fly. Everyone says I should watermark. There you go. So, so Corey Sandler, so if you go to the GPT, so what I'm in right now is the image and graphics show and tell. If you go to the GPTs, not, not a ton have been posted here. So like, I think two things down. Yeah, right here. So Corey Sandler's um, Art Shield, Copyright Protect Watermarks. That's the link to her GPT. You can also just go look for Art Shield and on the GPT store, and it'll be there. I got the itch. Megan got the itch. So get in there. Get in there and do it. All right, everybody. Let's see. Investor, until someone creates GPT, how to remove her watermark. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the, the watermarks are just a... You know what it, what it really is? Is Wait, I'm making another one right now. Similar, but a bit different. I'll let you know when it's done. That's great. That's awesome. Anyway, go follow her. Robert Rossi, thank you. Emilio's wife, good to see you. Um, Brandon, thanks. Danielle, good to see you. Jane Doe, bar -dur -dur -dur. inhale, exhale, Joe 90, <laughs> inhale, exhale, that's pretty good, healthy, wealthy, and wise, good handle, Sherry D, good to see you, Tobias, thank you as always, Daniel Hollingsworth, we're going to need to differentiate app developers from coders and engineers if AI mashups are apps, I don't know that we're going to need to to differentiate them, Daniel, I think that's that's old world thinking. I think we are about to enter an era where everyone, where, where all this shit's democratized. App development is democratized. Art creation is democratized. Video creation is democratized. Music is democratized. All of it. All of it. All knowledge work. Data analysis is democratized. Business consulting is democratized. All of it. All the shit that we went to school for where we studied a specialty is going to be available to everyone else. I think the world gets really interesting when that happens. And we're not that far from it. You know, we're like three years from it being, you know, fully rolled out. We're, we're in the middle of it right now. Um, so, so, yeah, I think right now you might want to distinguish between, well, Corey Sandler is not really a developer because she's just using, you know, chat GPT. That's not real development. But I can tell you that the way she is developing apps, a developer will never have gotten there because she's coming at it as an artist with the ability to code. And then I look at someone like Roger Scott, who was a coder for 30 years, and the way he's approaching images, an artist would never get to. And he's making amazing art, right? Like, so it's just, so I think the the mashups, the, the, the societal mashups that we're about to experience are going to be absolutely insane. And I don't think we need to distinguish them. I don't think it's important or relevant to say this one's a real developer and that one's not. This one's a real artist and that one's not. No, anyone who decides to express themselves in any form is fair game. If it's good, it's good. How they got there, who gives a shit? So anyway, I'll leave you with that tonight. Peace out, everybody. Keep showing up here. Hang out at the salon. Don't be an asshole. Peace.